Alright, so coming in, uh, my name is Howie. I'm going to be setting up my room. Um, that's why we're going to must add, starting with the arrow um, bamboo bag, which is installed, set up, ready to go, and is uh, working. It's right where I need it to be. Then I'll look at my breathing circuit. I'm going to extend it, make sure there's no kinks or breaks or leaks. My face mask is installed, it's the right appropriate size, and then my ETCO2 is connected to all the way to my monitor, which it is. And then I'm gonna start SAM Tide. S is in suction, I'll make sure that my suction machine is installed. Um, it's on, ready to go. And I'll start with airway. So I have two different oral airways, one of different size. I also have a tongue blade. Uh, speaking of blades, I have two different blades, one Mac and one Miller. I'm going to open it, make sure the light is working, and that it is clipped on. That's good. Next, I'm going to check my ET2. Um, this is a uh, young male. He's pretty big. He's So I'm going to give him a 7.5 ET tube. I have the stylet all the way up to the Murphy's eye. And I'm going to check the bubble, the air, make sure that it holds pressure, and it does. I also have a smaller ET2 for emergency purposes, just in case. Um, next, I'm gonna check my, my machine. So I'm going to uh, turn up the pressure and I'm gonna check to make sure that it holds pressure. which it does. So I'm going to reconnect the face mask, switch over to the vent mode, and make sure my bellows are inflating and that they're appropriate. Go back down, open my APL. Uh, next I'm going to check my machine. So I have, um, um, I have my valve size machine here, and I have my uh, uh, parameters. I have ETO2 greater than 80%. I have my pulse ox greater than 92% and it's audible. I also have my ETCO2 within 35, 45. My blood pressure and my heart rate are within range. And so going to 100, 60, 100. Okay, and I have a thermometer just in case I need it. I do have my blood pressure cuff. I have my EKG leads and my EKG stickies as well as my SpO2 finger monitor. And a stethoscope as well. And um, so next, I'm gonna go into my IVs. I went into the pre-op, I evaluated the patient. I know that he has a working left AC IV. Um, and I also have two IV poles on each side of my bed. I have uh, appropriate fluids running, and I have machines, uh, IV machine pumps programmed and ready to go if I need them. Uh, oh, and then um, uh, I also have tape, uh, two different pieces of tape. Uh, one is for the patient's eyes. I'll put them in the mask so we don't forget. And then I also have tape for the ETT. Um, so we talked about IVs and IV poles. Next I'm going to talk about my drugs. I do have V flapper as my mnemonic. V is for Verset, two milligrams is a maximum dose for a concentration of one mg per mil. So I have two mils here. For fentanyl, I have 250 micrograms maximum, 50 mics per mil. So I have five mils drawn up. For lidocaine, I have 100 milligrams for 20 mg per mil concentration. So I have five mils drawn up. Propofol, I have a maximum of 200 for a 10 mg per mil concentration, so I have 20 mils drawn up. For rocuronium, I have 50 milligrams per mil. I have 50 milligrams maximum dose for a concentration of 10 mg per mil to give me 5 mil for this medication. For my emergency medications, I have atropine, 0.1 milligrams per mil. I have 0.4 drawn up. For phenylephrine, I have 100 micrograms per mil. Um, I do have one cc of that into a nine mil NS syringe, so it gives me 100 uh, micrograms per mil. I have 10 mils out of that. For propofol, it's the same 
dosage and concentration. For lidocaine, same dosage and concentration. For my first E, I have uh, uh, ephedrine, five mg per mil. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take one mil of that, put that into nine cc's of normal saline for me to get um, uh, 15 mg per mil of epinephrine. So that gives me uh, 10 um, cc's here with a diluted, uh, diluted, double diluted concentration. Then for the ephedrine, I have 50 mg per mil. Uh, what I'll do is I'll take one mix of that and then I'll put that in my 9 mil NS for me to have a um, uh, 5 mg per mil concentration for that one. And I'll have 10 mils drawn up. For succinylcholine, I have 200 milligram maximum for 10 mix, I'm sorry, 20 mg per mil concentration. So I have 10 mils of that as well. So those are my drugs. And now I'm gonna step back and then check to see if there's anything else. This patient is having a lap coli, so I'm gonna bring in um, a peripheral nerve stimulator as well as a bear hugger. I see somebody's taking care of the coli, um, and that'll do it for my equipment. Uh, so now I have my um, machine. I'm just gonna do a first sweep, make sure my oxygen is working as part of my machine check. Um, and then all my vaporizers are off. I have enough volatile anesthetics. Oxygen. So I'm going to turn off all my flow meters. I have my APL valve open. I'm on bag mode um, and uh, my machines and my monitors are ready. I'm ready to take in this patient. Okay, so the patient comes in. How are you doing, sir? Welcome to the OR for the first time. I remember I'm Howie. I'm your CRNA. Can you repeat to me your name and your birthday again? All right, Mr. Joe Smith, thank you very much. So I'm gonna have the I'm gonna have the your gurney come up all the way to the operating room table, and then when you get a chance, just scoot on over. And as he's scooting over, I'm gonna give him two milligrams of of Versed. So this medication is gonna make you more comfortable, Mr. Smith, and um, it's gonna make the intubation procedure go much more smoothly. So at this time, I'm gonna put the mask on lightly on top of your face. I'm gonna make sure I'm gonna cover your nose and your mouth. I'm gonna bring your chin up so I can get a nice seal. And then I'm gonna pre-oxygenate Mr. Smith. I'm gonna bring it up to five liters per minute. All right, Mr. Smith, take a couple of deep breaths. Best oxygen in town. Just go ahead and relax and let the Versed start to kick in. I'm checking to make sure that his ETCO2 waveforms are coming up and that they're appropriate um, and that his ETO2 is over 80% and that he's tolerating the mask well. Fantastic, so at this point in time, I'm gonna have my assistant hold on to the mask and then I'm gonna put my monitors on. So I have my EKG monitors, I have my blood pressure cuff and I have my SpO2 on his finger. I'm gonna run a, uh, I'm gonna run a set of vital signs, make sure it's appropriate. Mr. Smith. All right, so his blood pressure, his vital signs are still good to go. ETCO2 is still there. He's tolerating the mask well, and I've given the Versed enough time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring in uh, some fentanyl and lidocaine. So I gave him the fentanyl. These medications are gonna make sure that you don't feel any pain, sir, and as much as possible during your surgery. All right, and while that's happening, I'm letting that sit through. I'm gonna step back a little bit and say, hey, uh, let's do an anesthesia timeout. Once again, my name is Howie. I am gonna be taking care of Mr. Joe Smith here. He is a 22-year-old male. He has, full, he has full code, no known allergies, no previous medical or anesthetic history. He is here for a lab coli. Um, does anybody have any questions or concerns? Okay, if so, if not, then we'll continue to proceed. And I'm looking at the vials, and he's still doing well on his latest uh, vial signs change. Okay, Mr. Smith, I'm gonna give you some medication to help you go to sleep. It might feel a little bit warm, but it'll help you go to sleep really quickly, okay? Uh, so I'll put in the full 200 milligram or 20 cc's of propofol. And make sure the mask still has a good seal. 
And I'll give it about 30 to 60 seconds, uh, 60 to 90 seconds for it to kick in. At this point in time, I'll make sure that I'm watching his face. If his face starts to uh, look like it's relaxing, I'm gonna give him a little few more seconds and I'm still breathing for this patient. So I close the valve and I'm still breathing. Okay, so I think I'm gonna try to check um, for relaxation. I'm still breathing. Mr. Smith, Mr. Smith, hi. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Give him another breath. If he doesn't respond, then I'm gonna double check with an eyelash reflex and he has no reaction. One more breath. Okay, at this point in time, I am going to, uh, I'm gonna have my airway set up. So I have my rock uranium. I have my MAC blade. I have my ETCO2 with a stylet and the airflow syringe. Here's another breath. During my anesthesia timeout, I'll check to make sure that his ETO2 again is over 80%, his blood pressures are fine, his ETCO2 is good to go, and that he had uh, bilateral chest sounds as well as some mist in the mask, and the ETCO2 again is okay. All right, so at this point in time, I'll give him one more breath, and then I'll hook it up, give him the rock uranium, set up my blade. I have him where I need him. I have him in the sniffing position. I'm gonna do the scissor position with my fingers and make sure his lip doesn't curl in. I'm gonna bring in the blade. I see the aphoglottis with the vallecula. I see the cornea, corniculus in the cuneiform. I'm gonna advance my ET tube. vocal cords and I'm at 21 to the lip. I'm gonna retract the blade to make sure they don't hit the teeth. Salad is out. Air is in. Syringe is off. Make the circuit. I'm gonna verify that the patient is confirmed inducted. So I'm gonna put my stethoscope on. And I'm gonna listen. Negative pressure left lung, negative pressure right lung. lung. I have positive pressure left lung, positive pressure right lung, negative pressure epigastric region. I see mist on the two. CO2 is still uh, normal parameters and normal and appropriate waveforms. I'm going to do a sweep. I'm going to bring, I'm going to open up my APL. <clears throat> I'll switch them over to vent mode, go down to two liters, and I'll turn my CVO to three for so one mat. Uh, he does have appropriate tidal volume, appropriate respiration rate. His peak pressures are not in a pro are not too high. Oops. And at this point in time, I'm going to tape him up and secure him. From the jaw. Mustache. Mm -hmm. 45 degree to the other mandible. And then two taps. Um, one more check. I have, uh, I have low flow on. My APL is open. Monitors are on and they're looking fine. 